We are evacuating communities. Our task is to arrive to evacuate all the citizens of the Gaza envelope. This evacuation has to be safe, to scan the area, to make sure there are no terrorists, to take out buses, to evacuate the citizens. We will finish this task in the coming day. And we continue to track the crisis in Israel. That was the IDF spokesman, Daniel Hagari, warning people who live in the Gaza Strip to evacuate that area. Now, these warnings to Palestinians living in the region comes as Israel increases its strikes against Hamas in retaliation. Joining us now to weigh in, we have retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer and senior fellow at the America First Policy Institute and Newsmax contributor Fred Flights. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. morning. Colonel, to you first. Uh, now, sure. Israel typically gives evacuation warnings before airstrikes on locations. They call this the, the knock on the roof policy. But uh, right. this, this hasn't ha necessarily happened with these strikes uh, over the past day. Should Israel be issuing these warnings at this time? I got to be honest with you, Sarah. If you have a population who essentially is willing to look the other way and allow terrorists to use their building for terror, you know, they've made that choice. And I, I, I hate to say this, I am not a neocon. I do not believe in, in the unmitigated use of force. With that said, it's very clear at this point that Hamas has been using civilian targets, civilian areas for purposes of hiding their activities. And let's keep in mind the scope of this thing. Uh, several guests have alluded to the fact that this took preparation. This took a lot of resources. This took months. And so a lot of folks in uh, the Gaza Strip knew this was going on, knew it was coming. And again, this actually adds to the, the fact that the Israelis missed this because th this was this was huge. But with that said now, with the offensive operations going back at Hamas underway, uh, my recommendation if, is that anybody in the Gaza Strip who's next to a Hamas target better move. Yeah, yeah I think that's a very good point. There, there, there is some personal responsibility that goes along uh, when right. you're when you're in these situations. But Fred, I'm going to bring it over to you. You spent years working in the CIA. When it comes to the intelligence community, Israeli's agency Mossad, they're without a doubt one of the best in the world. So what could what happened here that they could have missed this, especially the colonel just said months of preparation. Somebody should have been talking assets on the ground should have they should have had an ear to the ground. Why were they caught by surprise? Well, it was a, an American intelligence failure, too, but it was an Israeli intelligence failure because of the intense surveillance Israel has of the Gaza Strip, of the human sources they have on the ground. There obviously was incredible communication security. I think a large number of the people engaged in this fight were not told about it until the last minute because there were no leaks. The Israeli government didn't know it was coming. But another problem here is I think the Israeli government was prepared to use technical means to intercept missiles. They didn't anticipate a massive run against uh, uh, border posts. They really were taken off guard, not just by the operational security, but by an attack they had not anticipated. Now, the, the Yom Kippur War also surprised Israel. It led to a change in government. A lot of heads rolling, and I think a lot of heads are going to roll after this attack, too. Uh, yeah, I can <laughs> think that that's something we can say Absolutely. is safe to uh, most likely happen at the end of all this. Uh, Colonel, this is becoming yeah. an international problem as well, because nine people from Nepal were wounded, and I do believe that they are among those captured. Uh, two people from Thailand were killed, and then 11 Thai nationals are also being held hostage. So how can the international community respond to this situation, especially when uh, internationals are also being held here? Well, the Israelis have already said, for now, just step back and let us do our job. And I mm -hmm. think that's the best thing they can do. The other thing we have to rec recognize, Sarah, is the, uh, the fact that this was stimulated, funded, coordinated, and encouraged, if not directed, by the Iranians. Uh, the Hezbollah folks right now, uh, are now uh, looking to come in if they pot potentially can. I think they know there would be a downside if they come in from uh, from Lebanon. Uh, I think there's going to be Lebanese targets struck because I think some of the weapons that are going to come, that's been used against the Israelis probably came through there. Uh, so I think the international community, if they want to do anything, has to focus on the Iranian aspect of this. And uh, it's very clear that the the, the mullahs 
are attempting right now to do more destabilization of the region. Sir, one of the other reasons I think this happened now is I think the Israelis were uh, truly moving forward with a stable, stabilized relationship with the Saudis. Yeah. So yeah. this was meant to disrupt that and some other activities the Israelis are currently moving towards. Fred, let's expand the conversation a little bit. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs is also joining in the conversation. Now, we know how duplicitous they are, but they're calling for a two-state solution, and they hope to establish a Palestinian state. Now, I was in Israel as a member of Congress, spoke with uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as the PLO. The PLO said they will never have a Jewish state ever. They won't allow it. So is that even realistic that we will come to a two-state solution? It's unrealistic, and I think it's laughable that China's trying to get involved here. I think we have to talk about what will the strategy be for the Israeli Defense Forces. They're not just, they shouldn't simply try to level Gaza. They have to destroy Hamas, both as a fighting force and as a government. Hamas is a terrorist organization. It can't be allowed to govern Gaza any longer. It has to be removed. And, and Hamas has enemies throughout the Middle East. The Egyptians don't like him. The Saudis don't like them. So there may be some possibility. There may be Arab states who publicly don't like what Israel is doing. But Hamas cannot rule Gaza any longer. That has to be a priority. Certainly, they were. They also, we have to make clear that they're not an elected uh, body. No, they, they've That's thrown right. themselves in power when technically uh, right. Mahmoud Abbas is the president of Gaza. But anyway, uh, Colonel Tony Schaefer, Fred Flights, thank you both so much for joining us.